I'm not afraid to say that we have the ability and we're capable to go out there and win next year. If we do some of the right things, some of the right moves, we can do that. You know, if we had better quarterback play last year in Atlanta, I might not be standing here. And they would have the ability to be talking about those things. But right now, if we can focus on some of those things and do some of that, I think that'll give us the best chance to go out there and win football games. The Atlanta Falcons are one of the more fascinating teams in the league this offseason, as it's clear they have a great foundation with star players on defense, good skill position players on offense, but a massive hole at the quarterback position. Atlanta finished 7-10 and last year, but did that in spite of having bottom three quarterback play in the entire league. For whatever reason, former head coach Arthur Smith and general manager Terry Fontenot were somehow confident in their former third round pick Desmond Ritter to be the trigger man for the offense, but it became fairly clear early on that he does not have what it takes to be a good NFL QB. He finished the season with 2,800 yards, 12 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, and was also benched in week number eight for the team's backup quarterback Taylor Heineke, which was another move the organization made that I didn't quite understand either. If Ritter was going to get the first real opportunity to be the starter, why not at least go out and get someone who has proven to be more than capable to step in and won football games like Gardner Minshew or Jacoby Brissett. The plan at quarterback just made no sense to me, and that ended up being the undoing for Arthur Smith. But the Falcons seem to have learned from their mistake and have big plans this offseason to bring in a legit veteran to step in under center. The two hot quarterback names this free agency cycle is Kirk Cousins of the Minnesota Vikings and Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears. Starting with Fields, who grew up right around Atlanta, people thought the Falcons might be interested due to his untapped potential and his pairing with Bijan Robinson in the backfield. There hasn't been much more information on the Falcons' attempt to trade for Fields though, and it doesn't seem like it's materializing. Initial reports were that the Bears were looking for a second round pick. I don't think Fields' market has been as strong as many people thought it would be, and when you think about it, it does make sense as there are still a lot of questions surrounding his game, and if he can throw consistently from the pocket, and then his contract situation as he's entering his fourth season, the team trading firm would have to decide whether or not to accept this fifth year option, which would cost around $20 million. If they don't want to accept that, is trading a second round pick for a risky asset with only one year left on their contract really a smart trade? When we saw the Carolina Panthers do this exact thing with Sam Darnold, just a couple of years ago, and that did not work out. So I think teams have learned from that and aren't willing to trade a top premium pick for another unknown at the quarterback position. And then there's Kirk Cousins, and he has emerged as the front runner to be the next quarterback for the Falcons, and who I personally think the team should sign. Now, Kirk does come with his own risks, as he's going to be 36 years old next season, will be off a torn Achilles. So we don't know how he will recover from that and if he will still be the same player we've seen the past couple of years. But then again, Kirk is a traditional pocket passer and doesn't use his legs much anyway. But that is something you have to think about if you're an organization, if you want to shout out a three-year deal worth around a hundred million dollars and I assure you that's probably going to be what it takes to bring in Cousins. He's one of the best businessmen in the sport and he was the first player to sign a multi-year fully guaranteed contract so he will definitely be looking to cash in again but the Falcons have plenty of cap room to make it work with currently 41 million in open space and contrary to the lack of reporting on fields to Atlanta there's been a ton of smoke regarding Cousins. Albert Breer reported he expects Atlanta to have its hat in the ring for the quarterback. Deanna Rossini said on the athletic football show that the Falcons' interest in Kirk Cousins is very very real and the Athletic reported that Cousins is expected to inform the Minnesota Vikings of his decision, whether or not he's actually going to test out the free agent market or not by Sunday night, which to me feels like a hard deadline for the Vikings to make a good enough offer for him to not actually take these negotiations to other teams. And I'm starting to get to the point where I would be surprised if he's not suiting up for the Dirty Birds in 2024. What ultimately comes down to is where the Falcons are at as a franchise. I think they proved last season they easily have a good enough infrastructure to win the worst division in football in the NFC South. And if they had a legit quarterback, they probably host a playoff game last year. With the organization sensing where the team stands in the NFC, they're going all in a little bit. The first piece of evidence we have for that is when they hired Raheem Morris to be their head coach. Defensive coordinators are not seen as a super hot commodity to be the lead man in charge anymore, but with Morris, you know you're getting a great leader, someone with a ton of experience and a great staff to come along with him. The Falcons showed they have some nice talent on defense with the likes of Jesse Bates, AJ Terrell, Grady Jarrett, and Morris will be able to get even more out of that unit as he has proven to be a really good defensive mind. But since he's a part of the Shanahan tree, he also has a lot of relationships with up and coming offensive minds that know the West Coast offense and how to teach it, which separates him from most other defensive head coaches who won't be able to hire as good of an offensive staff. The Falcons offensive coordinator will be Zach Robinson, who has spent the last five years with Sean McVay in Los Angeles. And the system he will run and bring over is just another reason why Kirk Cousins to Atlanta makes so much sense. Fields may be the more gifted athlete, the cheaper and younger option, but he also wouldn't be able to run the offense Robinson is bringing in. Cousins has been in this offense for the majority of his 
his career and has spent three seasons with Raheem Morris and two seasons with Robinson early in his career in Washington. So when you combine his experience with the coaching staff along with the schematic fit, this whole thing really does feel like a layup. But I expect we will get some clarity regarding Cousins' future in the first couple of days of free agency. He very well could be negotiating with Minnesota right now on a long-term deal. But in my opinion, if they haven't gotten anything done in the past month, what's really going to change in the next couple of days? I really feel like the only way Cousins does not wind up in Atlanta is they don't offer him a lucrative enough deal and Minnesota at least matches their offer. But outside of the quarterback position, the Falcons still have some work to do in free agency in the draft to shore up the roster for a huge up and coming season. In terms of their own free agents, they don't have many key ones in my opinion. The top ones would be Bud Dupree, Calais Campbell, and Jeff Okuda. Three players who got more than 50% of the defensive snaps from a year ago. Dupree had a solid season last year with six and a half sacks. I could see him being brought back on a smaller deal. While the same could be said about Calais Campbell, who also had six and a half sacks, but will be 38 years old. So for the most part, the Falcons will be able to go out and buy a few more players this free agency. And I think the two positions they desperately need is wide receiver and defensive end. Outside of Drake London, there's literally nobody else of note under contract at the wide receiver position. Van Jefferson, Scotty Miller, and Mac Hollins are all free agents. And I don't think either of them are a good wide receiver too anyway. What makes it a little bit difficult to address though in free agency is that there's not a ton of good options on the open market, but this draft is super deep at the position. But I definitely could see the Falcons use one of their first two picks on a receiver to add to their trio of B. John Robinson, Drake London, and Cal Pitts. In terms of the pass rushers, there are a few intriguing options on the market. Some of the high price guys like Daniel Hunter, Bryce Huff, and Jonathan Greenard might be a bit out of the price range the Falcons are looking to spend on one, but older veterans like Jadavion Clowney, Leonard Floyd, or Zadarius Smith could be a nice stopgap on a limited deal. This is another position though that I've seen mocked to the Falcons a good amount in the NFL draft with the eighth overall pick. So maybe Atlanta likes to take the best pass rusher on the board in the first round and then a wide receiver in the second and fill their holes that way. Some of those options could be Dallas Turner from Alabama or Jared Burst from Florida State. Two explosive players with high upside. If they like to go wide receiver in the first, likely have their pick at anyone not named Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors. So Ruma Dunze could be a potential candidate to end up in Atlanta. But if they do indeed wait until the second round, which I do think is more plausible, players like Troy Franklin, Xavier Worthy, Keon Coleman, and Jermaine Burden are a few good options that the Falcons could look to draft. With their cap space and likely solving the quarterback position with Cousins, they're going to have flexibility to choose how they want to attack these issues. But the Falcons are going to be one of the biggest dominoes to fall in this free agency and one of the more dark horse teams to look out for next season. I already mentioned the weak division they play in, and if they get Cousins, they'll be the favorite to win it, I would imagine. The Panthers are a mess with their limited resources and trying to surround second year quarterback and Bryce Young. The Saints are in salary cap hell and will be rolling out Dennis Allen and Derek Carr for another season. And while the Buccaneers will roughly be the same team they were last year, the Falcons split the season series with them and really should have swept them if it wasn't for a game winning drive from Baker Mayfield. So the biggest challenge won't be getting into the playoffs and hosting the first round. It'll be after that and having to face off against some of the heavyweights in the conference like the 49ers, the Lions, and either of the retooled NFC East teams in the Cowboys or the Eagles. And that's really what this offseason comes down to. If the Falcons organization can do enough in one year to get this team to that level. And while I do think that will be hard and something I don't expect at the moment, signing Kirk Cousins and hitting on a few draft picks will give them a chance. So keep your eyes locked in on Atlanta this for agency and in the draft because I have a feeling they're going to take some big swings. But I want to know what you think about the Falcons and what you think the team should do this offseason. Do you agree with me and think signing Kirk Cousins is the most important thing they need to accomplish? Or do you think they should go after a young quarterback and maybe even draft one this April? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But subscribe to the channel if you are new, drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next one.